to you today. Greetings to everybody on this Christmas day. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. The beautiful year that we experience and this we celebrate King Jesus's birthday today. We celebrate his birthday today. We all celebrate our birthday is fitting to celebrate the king of kings. Now, look at this beautiful earth. This is all his earth. You're all his creation. And today, this is his day. We call it his birthday. We call it his celebration. And we acknowledge the fact that he came down here, born of the Holy Ghost, supernaturally, and he has saved the world from sin. We are all partakers of that powerful grace of the Lord. And this is just the beginning. The Lord is constantly reinventing himself. He's constantly coming in new forms, new fashions to manifest himself. The other day, I made a statement. I said, when Jesus returned, and the Lord Jesus said to me, he said, son, I already returned. He said, I have many returns. He said, there will be a return when I will come take the church. But he said, son, I always return. I return all the time. 
So the returns of Jesus is always happening. He's always occurring. He's always coming. He's always appearing. He's always manifesting. And so you just got to be attentive and watch and look for it. And I'm trying to find some some uh, some Chitungiza music, you know what I'm saying? You dig? Trying to find some Chitungiza music. I'm trying to find it. No, I can't get jiggy with that. I can't get jiggy with that at all. I can't get jiggy with that at all. When you can't find the name of the song, you're trying to, you're trying to find the name of the song. I'm trying to find it where it's at. I'm trying to find it. You know I'm trying to find it. You know how you go when you're trying to find something. I'm trying to find it. You know, you're trying to figure out where it's at. You know how that goes when you're trying to figure out where something. I'm trying to find where this song is right here. I'm trying to try not to act like uh, too much like uh Never mind. Duck lips on you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How many of y'all ever got your car fixed by the mechanic, man? He always wanna, he always talking indirectly. How many of y'all ever went to the mechanic? He don't never got definite answers. How much is uh the muffler? Uh well. We gonna have to order parts. I, I, yeah, I know you gonna have to order parts, but how much is the muffler gonna be? You know, uh, uh, well, uh, of course it's gonna be in there for a couple and what couple of days? No, I need it tomorrow. Well, listen, if, if you want it fast, I can I can shake it fast. I mean, no, I don't mean to be mystical about this, but I can uh, get it done by tomorrow. But it's going to be a $200 fee. Well, how much is it going to cost total? But, okay, listen, wait, wait, hold on. We're going to have to weigh it out. When you see somebody doing that to you, it's because they're making up a price in their head so that they can have enough to feed their family afterwards and go buy the new Jordans. <laughs> That's why you got, you got to pull up on a mechanic. I'm about to get into this message. But the wisdom that you got to do, you got to learn how to pull up on a mechanic. <laughs> you can't give him a chance to think. Because if you give him five minutes thinking time, and, and when he say, hold on, let me go figure out. No, I'm coming in the back with you. So how much is it going to be? Yeah, I need to know how much it's going to be fully. Oh, hold on. Just give me a couple more seconds. No, I'll, no, I can't go. I'm about to leave. I'm about to go to the next mechanic. No, no, I got, I got it. I got it. Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Uh, um, because he's trying to figure out how he's going to buy the new Jordans, get you to pay a little extra, and he's going to make up a fake price. Don't give him the time. You got to pull up on the mechanic. <laughs> you got to pull up on the mechanic. Don't give him a chance. Pull up on the mechanic. Don't let him use his brain. Don't let him think. Lord Most High, I give you glory, oh yes, Lord Most High, I breathe you in, Lord Most High. I breathe you in. 
There's supernatural power when you start to realize and focus only on your life. Not positioning your life how other people's life is, but when you focus on your life. There's supernatural power when you only see the life that God has for you. The Lord has to train you through various things to get conform your mind to the life that he has for you. You come into this world, you see other people's life. You are taught about other people's life. You are told what life is right. And you're told which life is moral, which life is correct, which life is righteous, which life is holy, which life is pure, which life is successful. And you're given all these definitions. And it creates. A rejection when the father does your life a certain way. Because you're telling the father, no, no, I saw this. I saw this. It's supposed to be like this. No, I saw that. It's supposed to be like that. And that's where surrender dies. Saint, surrender dies because there is other information that was given to you that tells you it shouldn't be. And God has to train your mind to believe how this is supposed to be. I'm not supposed to hit rock bottom. Who told you that you're not supposed to hit rock bottom? Who told you that when you was up, you was up illegally? Who told you when you had a house, you had a house illegally? Who told you that when you had a car, you had a car illegally? They're not supposed to repossess my car. It's not supposed to go like that. Who told you that you were supposed to have a car? Saints, 
Surrender is when the Lord positions you where you're supposed to be. Even if it looks bad, even if it seems bad, even if it feels bad, it's still where you're supposed to be. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fire, and that's where they were supposed to be. Why does the fourth man that comes looking like the Son of God appears? Because that's where they're supposed to be. Even when Daniel is in the lion's den, that's where he's supposed to be. You say, no, 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 he's not supposed to be there. No, no, if, if he doesn't go there, he will be alienated from the table that God has reserved for him. All of your finances, all of your joy, all of your peace is hidden in darkness. Saints, you never heard this before, but the whole earth was hidden in darkness. The Bible said, in the beginning, God made heaven and earth. But it said darkness hovered over the face of the deep. All oh, this is darkness. God made heaven out of darkness. So isn't it ironic how you could try to run from darkness when that is the tunnel to heaven? That's the tunnel to the blessing. That's the tunnel to favor. Joseph, he's in slavery. He's in jail. All these things, but he's in the will of God. Even in the midst of accusation, he's in the will of God. Even in the midst of having a criminal record, he's in the will of God. Some of you all, oh, I don't want to get my record messed up. Oh, I don't want nobody to talk about me. You can't receive the will of God. Because the will of God is in all these things. You can't receive where God has created you to go if you refuse to surrender to the right information. Oh, well, well, you know, I don't want to look like, you know, that I was this or that. Listen, he that saves his life will lose it. But he that loses his life will find it in me. What is your life? Your life. It consists of people, events, image. It consists of decisions. It consists of portrait, appearance. That's why people judge your life by how you look. I've been in places where people will have me and get, try to speak to me better than the person that look a certain way. And I will go talk to the person that look a certain way so that they can see this is how you're supposed to talk to them. See, you can talk and even convey a message with your actions. Your actions is the highest form of communication. Your action is the highest form of communication. If you take a note, write that down. Your actions is the greatest conversation that you'll have with anyone. Your actions is the greatest declaration that you will utter to someone else. Your actions. So the Bible said he went around doing good because doing good was really the words God so loved the world. You see that? He went around doing good because it was reflecting the word God so loved the world. You see that? So God so loved the world was in the going around and doing good. It was really hidden in the going around and doing good. So he manifested God so loved the world through going around and doing good. Then he met, then the woman called act of adultery said, he said, neither do I condemn you. He said, where are your accusers? Go in peace and sin no more. He manifested, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. So, so, so when he told the woman, neither do I condemn you, go in peace and sin no more. He was reflecting the word Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So your actions is the greatest form of communication. 
Every sentence that you're really speaking to God is in your attitude. Your, your biggest prayers to God is in how you manage your emotions. I'm going to say this one more time. Your biggest prayer to God is in how you handle your emotions. That's the highest level of communication. You don't believe it? Moses is praying to God, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're a man of war. The Bible said that he made a song. Lord, you're a man of war. He's worshiping. He's praying God. A praising God. He's praying. He's a prayer warrior. But the Bible said that God said, speak to, speak to the rock. And the Bible said he struck the rock. And God heard the action more than the vocabulary. And God said, you will not enter into your promised land. And then he tried to talk with his mouth. And God said, no, I already heard you talk. Your actions told me you don't want the promised land. Repentance is a different action that causes God to have a different reaction. That's why repentance is so important in your life. If you don't repent, that means that God has to stick with the reaction to the state that you was in. Before you communicated the right thing to him. Repentance. That's why I say it removed the death sentence. Because it communicates a different answer to God. Okay, Jonah is running from God. He goes on the ship. He's communicating, forget you. But then when he's in the well belly, he said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'll do it. He goes. He communicates something different. And it's all in his actions. If you're taking notes, write this down. Repentance is the restoration of sound mindedness. Repentance is the reconciliation with the correct mindset, the correct thoughts, the correct reactions. Repentance is the right reaction to the to divine presence is the right reaction to divine presence and wisdom doors. Repentance is how you conduct yourself in a Christ-like manner to a Christ-like opportunity. Don't let other people decide how your life should be. Learn how to grow in obedience to what God said and love how God said it and love what it produces while you're doing what God said and rejoice. Do you know what the Lord showed me? He says, son, on the seventh day, I rested. But he said, notice on the sixth day, the fifth day, I kept saying that everything I created was good. He said, son, seven was a day where I reflected fully on my progress. And he told me, tell my people, he's telling me right now. He said, tell my people that rest is when you study the progress that you have made. So the Bible said there remaineth the rest because many people have not mastered how to look at the times where they did obey God and build off of that. Here's what the Lord said. Rest. That's why I said there remaineth. Even after Jesus dies, there still remains a rest. Jesus said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Okay, so rest is given. So watch this here. How is he going to give you rest? Because he's going to start leading you by his spirit. And then he's going to give you the ability to look at the times where you're led by the spirit. So that you can build off of those times and go further. The Lord Jesus has Peter. Have the revelation, tap into the revelation that he's the Christ. So now he's like, okay, I'm going to let you step into rest. And rest is also a rest of the revelation. Given the whole package of the revelation, are giving him the rest of divine functionality. Giving him the rest of supernatural abilities. And then he tells him to walk on the water. He's taken him into the rest of what he showed him. Because he told him you are the, he, he, the Lord Jesus had him see you are the Christ. 
So this is what Christ do. They move in the supernatural. They walk on water. So now the Lord Jesus is showing him what he decreed with his own mouth. If the Lord Jesus showed Peter what he decreed out of his own mouth, why don't you think that he's going to show you what you decreed out of your own mouth? <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. 